Hi there, thank you for joining me in our study in 2 John today. 2 John has just got one chapter, only 13 verses, so we're going to go through this whole book today. Don't get scared, it's not going to take very long. But there's a powerful message in here for us. There's a powerful message and an encouragement to walk in the things of the Lord, to walk in what Jesus is saying to us, and be careful of the Antichrist spirit that comes to deceive those who will listen to it. And this is a good warning for us even today. Once again, thank you for joining me in our study today. We, as I mentioned already, are in 2 John. 2 John just consists of one chapter and a few verses. It starts out, the elder to the chosen lady and her children whom I love in the truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth. But we wonder who was John writing this letter to? And there's a few schools of thought. One school of thought is that the chosen lady that he's referring to and her children is the church and the members of the church. That could be, but remember that he wrote 1 John to the church. And this is kind of just a repeat of 1 John a bit, so it really doesn't seem like that's possible. The other thing is, is that it was written to a lady who was leading a church somewhere, but they didn't want to put her name in it because uh, oftentimes these letters get confiscated and the people can be put into danger. So those two schools of thought as to who this chosen lady can be, I think we'll take it as a person who was leading a congregation along with her children. That was very common back then. Because of the truth which lives in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, will be with us in truth and love. Just encouraging us in his greeting you know, that, that God's grace and mercy and peace is with us, that we have the Father and the Son with us. It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I am not writing a new commandment, but one we have heard from the beginning. I ask that we love one another. This is an encouragement that John's given us. It's an encouragement that Jesus gave us. Jesus gave us two laws to follow, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And out of these comes the attitude of our heart towards everything that we do. This is what's supposed to happen. Whether we're forgiving people, whether we're working with people, whether we're teaching them about Jesus or we're presenting the gospel, it should come out of a compassion for them. This is what he's saying. I'm not giving you a new commandment. I'm just asked that we love one another. Continues on in verse 6 and he says, And this love that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that we walk in love. Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is a deceiver and the Antichrist. So he's warning them against people who are going out and talking and teaching uh, against Christ, against what is going on. He says, we call these ones the Antichrist, the deceivers. And we have that same Antichrist spirit with us today. In fact, it's actually quite rampant in, in a lot of churches today because it's allowing teaching in that takes away from what Jesus has done. If there's teaching that comes in that takes away from what Jesus has done, if you can have salvation, if you can get to heaven without Jesus, then that is an antichrist spirit. And we need to be very careful of that because we need Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no way. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What part of no one don't we understand? That's who it is. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. And it is only through him that we can come to the Father. So those who are teaching any other teaching are walking in a spirit of Antichrist. 
When you say, no, it's the law, if you follow the law, then you'll have salvation. No, that's an antichrist teaching. If you teach that, well, everybody's going to go to heaven, nobody's going to go to hell. No, that's an antichrist teaching because you're not identifying with what Jesus has done for us. It's so important for us to understand that, right? In the world today, there's such a huge movement. Satan's working on the hearts of so many people to try to eradicate Jesus out of the world. And even being said, God is fine. Witchcraft is fine. Any, anything else is fine. But if you mention Jesus, then that becomes a huge uh, situation because Satan knows if he can get Jesus out of the equation, then he's won. Verse 8, he says, Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. So he's sending a warning. There must have been some situation that he was dealing with here when he was talking to this lady and her children. He says, Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for but that you may have your reward fully don't turn away from jesus don't turn away from the way you walk don't turn away from the message that you have received amen anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of christ does not have god we can't rock run ahead of the holy spirit we need to walk with the lord and have him guide us in everything we do amen Whoever continues in teaching has both the Father and the Son. Continue in the teaching, continue in the gospel. Remember when these things were written, the New Testament wasn't written yet. The teaching had to go by word of mouth and people were being taught and it was spread out and then these letters that would go back and forth and encourage people, right? He says, whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. The Father and Son abide in us, right? The presence of God is in us, the, the temple. We are the temple of God on this earth. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take him into your house or welcome him. Anyone who welcomes him shares in his wickedness. If this antichrist or the deceivers come to you, don't welcome them into your house. Don't let them come in and influence your family. Don't let them come in and influence your church. Don't listen to what they have to say because they are deceivers. They are not preaching Jesus. They have an antichrist spirit. And this is a good warning for us today to have that kind of attitude that when somebody comes in and they start preaching against Jesus and they, they're talking about other things that we just not have anything to do with them. Amen. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your chosen sister send their greeting. John is just saying we have many things to talk about, but we don't want to spend it, uh, time with the uh, paper and ink, but we hope to come and speak to you face to face. This is just a very short book, just a very short letter, um, just encouraging this lady and her children to walk in the things of the Lord. And it's an encouragement to us also. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this book. We thank you for Second John, Lord. We just thank you for the words that are spoken here, Lord. May we take these words to heart and may we walk out the things that you have for us in these uh, verses that we have read here today. What a blessing it is, Father, and an encouragement. We just ask, Lord, that your word would go out far and wide, that it would touch many hearts. And we just thank you for the opportunity to share your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very short book, only 13 verses and just a few minutes long, but it's a, a good reminder to us to walk in the things of the Lord. Remember, God loves you and so do I. Okay, girls, take us home.